here at the International Conference on Men's Issues hosted by Mike Buchanan of Fa uh, Justice for Men and Boys in London, England. For the benefit of anyone in the audience unfamiliar with some of the terms used by people in the men's rights movement, it is terrorism of the worst kind. Of history. Oh my god, that's so retarded. And, oh. and, and I shot I shot Paul Elam too. I shot Aaron. Uh, I shot everybody. Uh, <laughs> we should stop at some point and actually, yeah, because stop doing the autistic thing. Hi, my name's Mike. I'm an idiot. I, I am the quintessential keyboard warrior. And one more item that I just have to rant about. We need to find that the the the, the real um, nuclear family with a heterosexual man and woman bringing up children. Quite boring. So bigoted. So insanely skewed in. If you can talk with tiny crowds and still keep your lack of virtue, or walk with return of kings and pretend not to, if neither friend nor foe can understand what the fuck you're talking about, if all men, and only men, count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of rape apology, then yours is the imagined oppression and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be an MRA, my son. Hello there, hello there, hello there, and welcome to episode 29 of The Descent of Man, O Sphere. The series where I take you through the ways in which the Manosphere and its utterly reprehensible douchebag inhabitants are trying to reverse human evolution and drag us all back into the fucking sea. And today, we're not dealing with an individual. Oh, no, 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 no. Today, we are dealing with the absolute fucking motherload of MRA dipshittery. Yes, it's the largest gathering of evil pricks in one room since the Nuremberg Trials. Yes, it's the International Conference on Men's Issues 2016. Now, the ICMI 2016 was held in London, England, uh, which is in the UK, which is in the Northern Hemisphere, in Earth, the Milky Way galaxy, yada, 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 was held over the weekend of the 8th, 9th and 10th of July in 2016, as the name would suggest. Which might make you think, well, Kev, why are you producing this fucking video months after it happened? Well, two main reasons. First, as I said in the very first episode of the series, I am a profoundly lazy bastard. But secondly, and more importantly, the MRM is such a disorganised fucking rabble, an absolute shower of dickheads, that they drip-fed the videos of the speeches at the conference and the interviews at the conference bit by bit on the channels, firstly of Mike Buchanan, I'll get onto him later, and secondly on the channel of Paulie Lamb. I will also mention him later on as well, trust me. So anyway, yeah, that's why it's fucking late, okay? Just deal with it, people. But the ICMI 2016 was attended by such luminaries as the aforementioned Messrs. Buchanan and Elam, I nearly forgot their fucking names, brilliant, fuck it, that, that takes staying in there, bollocks to it, um, as well as attended by YouTubers such as Dr. Random Akam and Spinosaurus Kin and Victor Zen, and the conference was even graced by the presence of two former inductees into this particular Hall of Shame in the forms of uh, Goodfella and Karen Strand, I nearly forgot their fucking names too, this is ridiculous. And this conference was just like every other gathering, either virtual or real, of MRAs, in that there was one particular topic on everyone's lips. Feminism. 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 Feminist. Feminism. Feminists. Feminists. The feminism. Feminism. Feminist. 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 The feminist movement is a feminist, but feminists. Feminists. Feminism. Only feminists. Feminist. Feminism. Feminism. Feminism and feminism. Yes, feminism. Of course. That's what they always end up talking about. Now, whilst they did bring up other topics, things that, you know, their usual uh, uh, talking points and all the rest of it, there was basically a way of shoehorning in their hatred of feminism. Because in the end of the day, the MRM isn't really a movement for anything. It is a movement against, a reaction against, a reactionary group against the advancements of feminism over the last, say, let's say, century, century and a half. And as ever with the MRM, the main kind of activists had to fleece their flock in order to try and get there even though really they should do it on their own fucking dime because most of them are right-wing dickheads who are against sort of you know people cooperating because that's socialism or whatever please go to the low bar of of this hangout uh click on there and throw a little something in the tip jar uh for steve it would be very much appreciated and i know steve wouldn't pitch you that hard for the money but i don't care i will we need to have these conferences, but we do it all on a shoestring budget. 
and we rely on support from generous donors. Now, given the high cost of the conference and the grassroots nature of the movement, we need your help to fund the speaker's travel and lodging. And I'm asking for your support to help me attend and document aspects of the International Conference on Men's Issues 2016. So anybody who wants to see me, Paul, Sage, and Hannah uh, be able to make it to this conference in London, um, please, please donate to our Kickstarter and help us make it happen. And frankly, virtually all of the fucking people who had Kickstarters or GoFundMes or whatever to get there needn't have fucking bothered. Alison Tiemann was filming the event and... and did a really piss-poor fucking job of it. The camera angles are by and large quite shit. The audio is dreadful. She was supposed to be doing like professional level stuff and people were paid thousands of dollars to send her there, you know? So I, it was just fucking dreadful. Karen Strahan was paid for as well, or at least in part paid for, and uh, went there and rehashed an old um, speech that she'd given fucking years ago about uh, um, toxic femininity. Absolute fucking waste of time. But more importantly than that, a source of constant amusement for me was uh, a guy called Steve Brule, who I've taken to calling Creme. Do you get it? Creme Brule. <laughs> oh, that's, a good, that's a good joke, isn't it, Rory No, it was shit. Everyone's a fucking critic, aren't they? But anyway, Krim, and I am going to fucking use that joke, so, you know, whatever. Uh, he was uh, sent there to do uh, filming as well, but to do interviews with people outside of the actual main conference um, and speak to them sort of one-on-one -on -one and get you know, a general sense of, you know, the, the occasion and, and document it and stuff. And he did an absolutely fucking pathetic job of it for the most part because he was constantly being trolled from the skies. And content delivery services. I apologize to the viewers again. We have a lot of airplanes going by, so we'll pause here for a moment and, and let that go by. This is probably not the best place in the world to do interviews because of the, uh, the proximity to the airport. The first international conference on men's issues. And Let's just let this plane go by. Lose your voice with the airplane going by here. Okay. We'll just let it pass for a moment. <clears throat> this example of one of those learnings. Most of the we, we might have to pause just because we've got another another airplane taking off. Yeah. It's a big risk for a politician to criticize feminism. I thought that, is it okay? Yeah. We've got another airplane going by here. We do have to pause when these airplanes go by. Good thing. We might have to wait till this plane goes by, because <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to hear much for a second. The jets have been a constant companion here over the past three days. Although I must say that within the conference center and within the hotels, they're very, very, very well insulated for sound. Yes, the conference center itself is fully aware that it is situated right next to a uh, city airport in the middle of London, right? And so it has taken steps to soundproof the inside of the building so that you can actually hold conferences there because it's a fucking conference center. So why not do the interviews indoors? Well, like, I can understand you making that mistake once or twice, but after that, go indoors, you twat! Do the interviews indoors. He did the majority of them outside and constantly was being interrupted by fucking planes going overhead. It was hilarious. The feminism. 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 Feminism is feminist. Feminism. The feminist movement. But anyway, where else to start with the actual conference itself and the speeches and all the rest of it, but with the host of the event itself, one Mike Buchanan who is leader of the absolutely pathetically laughable British political party, the Justice for Men and Boys, and then in brackets, and the Women Who Love Them party. Just going to show once again that women are at best a fucking afterthought to these people. And his speech was on the political war against men and boys, which was just shit and contained the usual MRA guff. But there were two particular points that I wanted to... Uh, uh, show to you and explore a little bit further. The first of which is a fundamentally false premise at the heart of the MRM, and the second one is a boneheaded lack of self-awareness. Um, among MPs, there'll be one name on the list of people, of MPs supporting men and boys, and that's Philip Davis. Everybody else, you know, just never, ever talks about men's issues. 
So no other MP apart from Phil Davis who spoke at the ICMI, which is quite worrying to have like a fucking British lawmaker there, but he's a fucking twat anyway, and basically a fucking irrelevant member of Parliament. But even so, right, your claim, Mr Buchanan, is that no other MP apart from Phil Davis speaks about men's issues in Parliament. So if that's the case, it would be very, very difficult, nay, impossible, for me to do a very, very brief... Uh, Keyword search and the Hansard records. Hansard being the organisation which um, uh, chronicles things that are said and done in Parliament. I mean, if a fucking gnat farts in Parliament, Hansard record it. Not literally, of course. That would be very rude to the gnats. Anyway, and Hansard have an online um, record of, certainly for the last, I think, 15 years, basically every word that's said in Parliament, they record it. So if you're right, Mike, it would be impossible for me to do a brief search of that and find tons of examples of other MPs from across the political spectrum talking about the issues that you claim to care about. And there's more. Oh, and there's still fucking more. Do you want any more? Well, you're going to fucking get some more. So, Mike, you're basically totally full of fucking shit because members of Parliament in both the House of Lords and the House of Commons speak about men's issues fucking regularly, you lying sack of shit. But why is it that Mike Buchanan has such a hate boner for members of Parliament? That feminists are never, never going to stop making their demands regardless of the consequences. We must hold politicians to account for their craven capitulation to these damnable women's demands. The political class has not the slightest intention of engaging constructively with MRAs. Well, I wonder, Mike, why it might be that mainstream politicians want nothing to do with your movement. Let's see if I can find some examples from just let's just pluck it out of the air a random MRA event. Let's say the International Conference on Men's Issues 2016. Totally at random there. Um, if I could find any examples of hateful shit being spewed by activists within your movement that, that would make you toxic to a political campaign. In the refuge, when a mother would come in and say, he did this, he made me do that. No, you did it. You chose him. Now, once one understands these things, it becomes far more clear why, for instance, the feminists are so reluctant to talk about touchy subjects like the Rotherham scandal, the Cologne scandal, or any other situation of actual harm done to women and girls by members of the religion of special needs. <laughs> we all laughed at... <laughs> And one of the first things women voted to do was provide themselves with alimony 
so that they could rely on men's resources and then started to vote for state spending so that the state effectively became their husband over time. And now they've turned the state into the father of their children. I think this is very much related to feminism and that if you didn't have women voting to make these decisions, we would be living in a very different society. Marriage has been replaced by a legally uncommitted union of two equal partners, just like in the communist proletariat, in which technically illegitimate children are being born wholesale. Seneca Falls, I believe, was in 1852. It was 70 years after that, uh, before the 19th Amendment was passed, another 50 after that, before the gorgon of gender feminism rose its ugly head and started inflicting even more damage. Our there's a case to be made for literal penis envy. So if there's anyone out there who still thinks that Black Lives Matter is a peaceful, effective human rights project, but the men's rights movement is a hate group, you are worthless, disgusting hypocrites. Um, so my question is, uh, are you expecting any more Brevix to happen in Norway as a result of this uh, feminization? I argue that basically we live in a in a a cultural communist society now. Because of feminism? Yep. Brought about by feminism, because feminism really is cultural Marxism. No, I think in area, in area after area, the feminization of workforces uh, has been a disaster. I mean, so the stereotype about lesbians being fat and hairy is actually true. So the stereotype about lesbians being fat and hairy is actually true. Yeah. That'd be why no fucking politician worth their salt wants anything to do with you people, because you are fucking poison. You are electoral, cultural, social and political poison. Now, having mentioned Phil Davis there, he was the Conservative Member of Parliament who spoke at the ICMI itself, right? And he got something of a backlash from his fellow Conservative Members of Parliament, and quite rightly so, because one of the very few, in fact, as the far as I could see, the only concrete plan that was actually... Um, put forward at this conference for trying to move the MRM forward in any way whatsoever was Mike Buchanan's uh, suggestion that the next general election here in Britain, the, I think, 20 most marginal seats in the country um, are going to be contested by uh, justice for men and boys and will women who love them, in brackets. And when I say a marginal constituency, I mean ones that are held by the fewest number of votes, and so those that are most easily swingable from one party to another, potentially, right? So if Mike Buchanan was able to replicate his result in the 2010 general election, where, where he got 153 votes. <laughs> oh, that's fucking pathetic. But anyway, then he could potentially swing a number of those seats and force the Conservative Party from government. In, you know, I don't think that's particularly likely, but it is definitely fucking possible. So Phil Davis backing up. Uh, Justice for Men and Boys and uh, Mike Buchanan by speaking at this event and generally showing support to them and, and drawing you know, a bit more attention to um, that political party uh, is basically committing sort of treason against his own political party. So well done there, Phil, because a number of those constituencies are held by a few dozen votes at best. So uh, 100 votes, 200, 300, 500 votes could easily swing the number of those seats and therefore put potentially Jeremy Corbyn in, um, into number 10 Downing Street as the Prime Minister, right? And the election of such a left-wing government would be the last thing that either Mike Buchanan and his political party, although he basically is his political party, but that's a, by the by, and uh, Phil Davis and his political party would want, which just goes to show again the capability that the MRM have of producing such epically, monumentally, spectacularly stupid levels of counterproductivity. Well done, guys. Feminism. 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 Feminists. Feminism. And feminism and not feminism. Feminist. Feminist. Feminism. 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 Feminist campaigners. Feminism. Oh, they're still going. Great. Anyway, um, a video on ICMI 2016 would not be complete without taking a look at the contribution of the rape advocate in chief, one Paul Elam, who is the founder and head scumbag over at A Voice for Men. Now, I'm going to skip the bulk of his speech because it's fucking bullshit, right? It was about this. Gynocentrism, 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 I repeated myself. 
Yes, Paul, you did repeat yourself. Fucking constantly. And you needn't have bothered, because it was bullshit the first time you fucking said it. So why do you think it would make any more sense the millionth time you said it? I'm not entirely fucking sure. But what I did want to take a look at was the first sort of two and a half to three minutes of his allotted speaking time, which was an impromptu rant, which wasn't scripted or originally planned. And the reason that we know it wasn't originally planned and scripted is because he released a pre-recorded version of his speech um, onto his uh, YouTube channel on the day that he gave his speech in London. And he did this because he quite rightly feared that he wouldn't be allowed into Britain, and therefore he wanted to have that pre-recorded version so that it could be played at the conference in lieu of his appearance. Because Britain does have a record of banning people it doesn't like in terms of like um, uh, really poisonous characters like uh, shock jocks or people with... Um, really bad uh, criminal records or whatever. Like uh, Rouge V during his 2015 Rape Palooza International Meetup fucking thing. Um, I don't think he was officially banned, but had he tried to gain entry into Britain, he probably would have been banned. And so Boy Lam quite rightly, um, feared that he wouldn't be allowed into the country, so he released um, that pre-recorded version, which didn't have this rant at the beginning. Now, the reason I want to take you through this little ranty bit that he sort of tacked onto the front of the, you know, the main bit of his speech is because it's just a fucking cavalcade of hate and bullshit, which was inspired by one of the people who spoke before him, one Cathy Gingel, or Gingel, possibly, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that, who gave a speech that was, by all accounts, a tradcon or traditional conservative um, sort of view on men's rights activism, which deviates from the orthodoxy of the Paul Elam narrative, all of which was confirmed by Karen Strahan and co over at Honey Badger Radio after the event. Conservative woman, and I cannot remember her name. Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. It's Kathy Gingell. I just told you that. I mean, it's almost like you're not even fucking listening to me, Karen. Yes. No, I was actually really happy with her presentation because it presented a different point of view and she actually got applause. She didn't get booed, even though I can imagine that she said some things that 90% of the audience vehemently disagreed with. They were who, willing to who, who was that, that sorry? Uh, the, there was a... I don't think that was you were there. But what, what, one of the things that she said that people took umbrage with was that, uh, you know, women civilize men. Oh, aye, that's I. Christine, I think her name was. I, I, I was there. I was sitting right next to Spinosaurus when she said that, and yeah. it, we both oh, just I'm looked sure, at each I'm other. Sure there were so many people who were so annoyed by that. So someone disagreed with Paul Elam's point of view, which therefore sparked one of the least gracious and frankly sane speech openings ever. I have some concerns. Uh, one of the things I want to say that I'm really grateful for the diversity, not only of this audience, but of the speakers of this conference. Diversity. You want to talk about diversity, really. How many black speakers did you have at your conference, Paul? Zero. How many non-white speakers did you have? One. There was fucking one. A guy called Anil Kumar, who's from India. But frankly, if it weren't for his attendance, you could pass your event up as a fucking KKK rally. It was whiter than the fucking Oscars, for Christ's sake different ways of thinking, different ways of approaching life. But I was left with a concern, and it's for the women in this audience. I feel you have been burdened with the responsibility for my moral character and for having a civilizing effect on me. I, I want you to know that you are all absolved of that responsibility as of now. Ah, passive aggression, the hallmark of the confident intellectual. And one more item that I just have to rant about, and please cover the ears of your children. There are 17 items on this list in front of you. It could be 70. It could be 700. There are so many issues facing men and boys today that we can scarcely count them. I want to say without equivocation that until I wake up in a culture where this is not looked at and shrugged, where it's not looked at and laughed at, where it's not looked at and have people tell me that I hate women. Now, people don't say you hate women because you're a men's rights activist or you fight for those issues. People say you're a misogynist, Paul, because of shit like this. One, I am not equating women to dogs, and not just because dogs are loyal and unconditionally loving. 
entitled Arrogant Women are the Gold Standard for the Western World, and exceptions are just that, exceptions. And yes, by the way, I am saying that at least 80% of women are emotional reasoners and in their raw state are unfit for intimacy, consistent communication, problem solving, or being anything other than a life-sucking pain in the ass. You can get the fuck out of my house. And by the way, you can take that bitch with you because she's obviously of no use to me either. I don't have a sense of nostalgia or grief about the defective parts. They just go in the can with the rest of the trash. There is only one force on earth that can make someone see cutting a female tumor out as that big of a loss. Gynocentrism. And remember, don't stick your dick in crazy. First, as I've been going on about, drop the hate and embrace reality. All you have to do, though, is accept that you are weak and dependent on men and that your worth is largely measured by the cup size. If you are willing to sell yourself out just to stick your dick in a psycho POS, the greatest threat to the modern man's personal values is the modern woman. Actually, rather than be cranky, you should be thankful. If men thought with anything other than their dicks, 98% of them wouldn't give you the time of day. I mean, why would any man pay any attention to you at all were it not for the prospect of boning you? Yeah, it's that kind of shit, Paul. That kind of shit which makes you a fucking woman hater. People call you a misogynist, because you're a misogynist. In order to express compassion for these problems, then I do not want to hear fuck all about how men need to be returned to their responsibilities to women. Two points, Paul. Firstly, if you love the diversity of opinion within your movement so much, why are you telling people what they can and can't tell you? Why are you telling them what you do and don't want to hear as the leader of their movement and stuff, if you're okay with other people having different opinions to you? Just a thought. And secondly, you might not want to hear about that, but you're fucking going to, you dickhead. So just get used to it. And anyway, that's the end of his hate-fueled diatribe at the end. That was the totality of his fucking epic takedown of this conservative woman. But I just want to take you back for a second to what he said about diversity. To say that I'm really grateful for the diversity, not only of this audience, but of the speakers of this conference. I think we're an example to the world of what diversity is supposed to be, what it actually is, different ways of thinking, different ways of approaching life. So he claims to be proud of the diversity of opinion within the conference. But then I do have to ask Paul, why is it that Cathy Gingell's speech, and remember that's the only speech that really differed from your point of view in any way whatsoever, why is it that the recording of her speech was the only one of any of the speeches given at the conference that wasn't released on the YouTube page or, or website of either yourself or Mike Buchanan? You see, everyone else's videos there, isn't it? Uh, all the other speakers um, have their videos lined up there, but... Uh... You won't find Kathy's video there at all. Oh, but you will see a deleted video. Could that have been hers? Who knows? So you're so proud of the diversity of opinion within your movement that the one person at the conference who spoke out in any way against your exact interpretation of men's rights activism was in a basically in a Stalinistic way uh, erased from the conference as if she'd never spoken there in the first place. Yeah, I'm calling bullshit on you, you dickhead. But anyway, let's move on because now it's time for feminism. Feminist. Feminism is feminists. It's feminism. Feminist. Feminist. But feminists. Feminists. Feminism. 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 Well, seemingly with you fucking like, it's always time for that. But more specifically, I was referring to it now being time for. <laughs> yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape. 
Now, the following clip just goes to show how fucking crazy and delusional the men's rights movement is when it comes to the issue of rape. And the clip is from a speech given by Erin Pitsy at the conference. Now, to be fair to Erin, she is one of the very, very few MRAs who have actually done anything, really, you know, like real-world activism or actually getting out there and doing groundwork to try and change people's lives in any way whatsoever. That doesn't change the fact that she's a massive fucking arsehole as well. I'm just giving her some props for at least being an actual activist. And like I say, this clip is fucking delusional madness. From the moment a man stands accused, he has no human rights. All allegations across the Western world made against men, the victim, or the so-called victim, has to be believed. Right, there's two points with this, right. Firstly, you will claim that men who get accused of rape have no rights whatsoever. That's fucking ridiculous. So what, like, the police are allowed to torture them, are they? The state removes their right to freedom of religion or something, yeah? No, obviously not. So clearly they do have quite a few fucking rights. Now, if you wanted to make the argument that there are certain curtailments of certain rights that you don't like or don't think is productive or fair, that would be one point. But to assert that all rights are removed is fucking hyperbolic, scaremongering bullshit. It's that kind of hyperbolic fucking nonsense, which means it's impossible to take the MRM seriously on this topic, because they've shown that they are either incapable or unwilling to discuss it seriously. So I'm not going to take you seriously. And secondly, Erin, in what fucking world do you live that you think that victims are always believed? Because that's bullshit, okay? Victims are often disbelieved. Victims have to run a fucking gauntlet of victim blaming and slut shaming and disbelief. And all kinds of other rape apology. I mean, you guys should fucking know, because it's often you guys doing it. You fucking odious bunch of pricks. Now, one of the things that's always really annoyed me about dealing with the MRM, especially on, like, social media or whatever, is that you'll argue with them, and you'll just make the very simple statement that they're a very right-wing movement. Then they'll come up with absolute fucking bullshit about how they're non-aligned and that they're, you know, uh, oh, we're not partisan, we're across the spectrum. And it's all fucking shite. I, I think that's, that's very true. And it's part of the whole program of the left, that if you can't depend on yourself, well, who do you depend on? You depend on the government. Which is why it's useful for, for ideological agitprop. Well, the word progressive, uh, like all other progressive words, including the word progressive, it means the opposite of what it says. Uh, progressivism is uh, more or less very close to a mental disorder. <laughs> um, if someone were to compare you, say, with the young William Hague, would you feel pleased or insulted? I would feel extremely complimented, thank you very much. <laughs> that this female majority was an intended result of the gender equality policy of the government. She was a socialist, of course. And I think also, I mean, what's been heartening is the, is, you know, is, is, is the number of women who are not following Hillary. But there, there, I think they'll excuse, they'll be Of course. Of course, always, always. <laughs> Don't worry, it's going to be President Trump anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And put with all that stuff, the fact that they had two people at that conference who had previously worked for the British Conservative Party and a Conservative Member of Parliament. And of course Milo Yiannopoulos was invited to speak at the event. And having initially agreed to attend the event, he backed out in the end because his dangerous faggot tour in America was going so well that he had to book extra dates and stuff. So basically he decided that he was more important than the movement, which just goes to show how committed he is to the cause. Just admit it, guys. You are a very right-wing fucking movement. Stop pretending to be neutral. You're not. You're a bunch of fucking lying reactionary dickheads. Feminist. Feminist. But feminists. Who's a feminist? Ah! ah. Feminism. Feminicide. From feminists. The feminism. 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 And the benefits of anal sex. Hang on a minute. How did that one get in there? That is what she said. Hey, Rory Katz. Nice one. High five. High five. Ah! Fucking hell. Not that hard. That is also what she said. Hey, <laughs> nice one, high five. Oh, for fuck's sake, Rory Cats. You don't know your own strength, you, do you? Fucking cat. Anyway, that's just a normal interaction there between a man and a cat.
I don't know what you're talking about. Now, I couldn't let you go without telling you a little bit about my favourite speaker at the conference, by which I mean the worst speaker at the conference. He's a man who goes by the name of Herbert Purdy. But anyway, his speech went a little something like this. Communist communists and socialism, socialist communist states, <laughs> communists, the communist Marxism, cultural communism. The communists lie in the communist proletariat. The core principles of communism, Friedrich Engels argued, and the frock-coated communist, as Engels has been called, and the ideas of Marx and Engels have found their social expression. It's enacted by a Marxist, the Marxist revolution, communist, East communism. So this is what society looks like after 45 years of feminism. Yep, that's right. That is one of the most intellectually lazy tactics going. It's right out of the Bill O'Reilly playbook. In lieu of any actual argumentation to try and refute your opponents, just call them communists a million times. What a prick! But anyway, let's wrap this shit up, shall we? Because I am fucking done with the ISDMI 2016 by this point. And I'll do so by telling you about um, someone who was planning to attend the event but then didn't, uh, one Sargon of Akkad. I contacted him on Twitter and asked him why he didn't attend in the end, and he replied with this. I had a few family things to do, to be honest, mate. Try to go easy on them. I think the ICMI is an important thing. Now, that's fair enough. If you've got family reasons, like, you know, he's got kids and stuff, so stuff can crap up, can't it? So, you know, it's, that's fine. But as to the second part of that tweet, um, I'm not going to go easy on the ICMI 2016 at all because they're fucking hateful pricks so i'm going to call them out as such now as to the i think quite sweet ending about how important he thinks that event is he's in theory correct really isn't he that event actually had potential to be something to take the mrm in a different direction you know a direction where they actually achieve things get things done actually help men in any way whatsoever rather than the fucking money grabbing lying, hate fueled bullshit that they've been involved with in the past. So in theory, he's correct. It could have been a very important event. In actuality, though, what it was, was the same old, same old. A bunch of hateful, right-wing dickheads getting together to complain about what bitches women are. They brought up all those other things, you know, the, the, the list of things that Paul Elam had next to him, when actually all the speakers did, he was there for all of them. The list that he highlighted at the start of his speech. They talked about a lot of those issues, but only as a conduit to then complain about feminism or how modern women aren't what they want them to be or whatever. So you know what? Fuck the ICMI. I'm not going to go fucking easy on them because they're dickheads and they deserve to be called out as dickheads. So to everyone involved in the ICMI, deeply, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, go fuck yourselves. With a Chinese menu in his hand Walking through the streets of Soho in the rain He was looking for a place called Mi Ho Foot Gonna get a big dish of that beef chow mein oh! Werewolves of London oh! Oh! Werewolves of London kitchen door You better not let him in Little old lady got me late late last night Where was the blood in again oh. Where was the blood in again